And funny enough, something happened. I received a letter from myself that I wrote six months ago when I attended Maya Elias's Built to Impact conference. I'm tired. I have been filming. I am acting in a movie called Extraction USA. I got my hair done for it, for my character. And it's a character very different from what I played before, but I'm having so much fun. It's one of the best sets that I've ever been on. The whole story of how I got to be in this film is crazy. I will share that with you. But for today, we're gonna talk about what do you deserve? And how do you believe that you deserve it? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Deja. I'm an actor, a filmmaker, and a creator, and I am making videos because God told me to. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of not joking. Um, I started YouTube in 2009. I really worked at it for several years. Stuff happened at home. Couldn't really continue being super consistent, but that's okay. I still did what I had to do. I raised my family. I made lots of short films, continued acting professionally, and done a lot of stuff. And recently God said, you need to get back on YouTube. In my last video, I talked about that experience, coming back to YouTube, and letting God lead this time. Also in my last video, I talked about how I want to get to the place where I'm living the life I deserve, I should live, and also believing it. So I will talk to you on the next video and we will be getting deeper into what I'm doing to make the life I want and the life I'm trying to tell myself I deserve. And funny enough, something happened. I received a letter from myself that I wrote six months ago when I attended Maya Elias's Built to Impact conference. Just to purposely take a tangent, purposeful tangent, that conference was so amazing. I've been wanting to go for several years. God worked it out where I had the finances to go to the conference. I highly recommend the conference. I felt like I belonged. I felt like I could bring my whole self. I could bring my fun self, my Christian self, my business self, my creative self, my quiet self, my loud self, my every, I mean, we just had so much fun. And it is really, really packed with a lot of value. And the ladies that you'll meet there are excellent quality people. And I actually made a really good friend there. We are still friends, like we're just growing in our relationship. Just to come back to our regularly scheduled program, back to off the tangent, I wanted to read the letter. So I, did, I wrote this March 3rd, 2023. Dear Deja, I know it's hard to believe that you deserve the life you desire, but you do. God is your father. You're a parent. You know what it's like to want to give your children the best, to help them dream and support them if they will let you. You are God's daughter. Therefore, you deserve it. This is easy for God. He knows how to give his children good things. Believe it, Deja. Please believe it. I know I said that twice because I know what I'd be thinking. Yeah, right. No, no, no. Please believe it. You can focus on living your life and love others and serve your community. It's all possible. Christ did it. I commit to being disciplined in my health strategies. I commit to not getting down into wasting my energy on distractions, but constantly giving my worries to God and trusting him with all my heart. In Jesus' name, to not be ashamed of going after it. I commit to continuing to invest in growing as a leader and making my creativity a priority in my life. I commit to believing in my gift and talent as a filmmaker and actor and not hiding it any longer. In Jesus' name, Deja, I'm excited to see where you'll be in six months. So, love Deja. So it's funny that I said I'm trying to be the woman who believes I deserve the life in my head. And since that conference, I have done a few things. I have identified something I needed to let go of that was really, really kind of messing me up when it came to my dreams with filmmaking. I really had to let go of this notion of being a production company and just being hired out to do other people's stories. There was something yearning in me to tell the stories that I wanted to tell. And you can see something I'm working on right there. 
And I've got stories in my heart that I want to tell. And I've been telling other people's stories for several years. And it's been a privilege and an honor to do so, to be invited into taking care of someone's baby in a way and birthing it with them and being that midwife in the story world, I guess, being a story midwife. And now it's time for me to go out in the wilderness and birth my own baby. Yeah, and so from there, I let that go. Um, actually was finishing up a, a documentary that I had been working on. I actually had just finished filming and left for Atlanta to go to that conference. And at that conference, I'm like, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to build this production company. I'm going to hire producers and like signed up for the biggest coaching program. And God was like, skirt, no, you need to stop, hold up, wait a minute. Let me recalibrate. Let me reroute you. And I realized I needed to focus on acting and focus on creating. And that is where I am now. <music> I am also in a fellowship that I didn't see coming. The opportunity literally came to me through a person who had worked on, actually co-produced a previous project I'd worked on. And they had a fellowship with their studios called Sparkland Studios. Got to really dive into understanding who I am. Not just who I am, but being able to articulate who I am, which is really hard. Sometimes it's really hard to articulate who you are. And so we did that deep work for months to figure out who I am, what do I have to offer, how do I connect with the people, the right people, and then actually working on being able to pitch myself and then actually them setting up like mock pitches with actual people who have experience and can give me really good feedback. And so I've grown a lot since this letter was written. Today, I actually just wanna address this idea of deserving because I think that's definitely something I struggle with it's almost like if you know who you are and you walk in it i feel like you're kind of punished for it or you're called a name or you're called stuck up or arrogant or something and it's always like you're punished if you know who you are and walk in it and i think it's interesting how little girls like they know who they are and they walk in it and we give them a pass because they're, oh, they're young. They don't really know. But secretly, I think we're all kind of inspired by little girls who know who they are and they walk in it. And I'm inspired by my daughters who know who they are and walk in it. My middle daughter told me the sweetest thing. She said, I feel like I'm more confident because you're my mom. My oldest daughter said something really sweet too. She said, I feel like I can do anything and I have every opportunity in the world. And that was my prayer. And my son also is a man, a young man, who knows who he is and will not. <laughs> you can't even get him to smile if he feels like it's fake. <laughs> like he wants to be so authentic. I'm like, dude, can you just smile for me in this picture? I really respect that about my kids and I respect that about me, that me and my husband have instilled that freedom within themselves to be who they are and still be respectful, you know, of their elders and people and kind and everything, but you have to be able to walk that line of saying, this is who I am, and you're not gonna tell me who I am. I think that's one reason that sometimes it's hard to believe that we can walk around in what we deserve because you get a lot of pushback if you do something like that. I remember as a young kid, like I really do feel like the Holy Spirit would talk to me about things and my parents really instilled in me mature things. And I remember, even though I was immature in other ways, like I still could see things that other people my age couldn't see. And I still behaved in certain ways that other people my age didn't behave. Now I won't lie, I still did things that were immature, but it was like I was punished for it or made to feel like it was uncool or stupid. And then five or 10 years later, I'm like on Facebook and it's like, I've learned that da 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 da. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like I just said, I said that to you like five years ago and you made me feel stupid. I want to address this thing and I, I'm going to, I'm just going to be blunt. I feel like in the church and women in the church, we're made to feel like we're not supposed to be like, I deserve. I think it's because we're taught that we don't deserve anything only because of what Christ has done. So we don't deserve anything. I think that we really have to categorize something like I don't deserve to go to heaven or I don't deserve to be right with God 
on my own merit. And then we get stuck there because <laughs> it's like Jesus died on the cross. I am a daughter of God. So therefore I deserve. But we get stuck in this like I don't deserve or this like fake humbleness or something. And it's very detrimental because I think at some point when you get older, you're like, man, I can't not act like myself. I can't not like be a woman who wants this for my life. And it's weird because in our culture, it's like, okay, well, you get to a certain age and it's like, well, you don't matter anyways, or you're old or whatever. And you're just made to feel this way by the time you finally figure out who you are and you're going to walk in it. And then if you're younger, like I said before, you can get punished. So I'm like, forget that. Forget it. I'm tired. Like I need to walk in it. That is why I'm back on YouTube. I know God is like, it's time for you to walk in this. It's time for you to walk in it. And I'm like, okay, whatever you want me to walk in, I'm going to walk in it. Okay, Lord, I will do it. And so here I am. Here I am. And I want to address this thing. So I'm a mother. If you ask me if my children deserve the best, I would say yes, they do. I want them to have the best schools, the best opportunities, the best type of friends. I want them to have the best spouse. I want them to have the best life. Now, why, DJ? Why do you want that? Why do you feel like your child deserves it? What did they do? Well, they're my child. I know their worth. I know they're valuable. I know they have things inside of them that the world needs. And I want them to be happy. And I want them to enjoy life. And I want them to live out to their full potential. And I don't want to see any human being actually not live up to their potential. I love to see human beings thriving. I want to see everything thrive, but it's so beautiful to see humans thrive with love and support and opportunity and hope. It's, it's beautiful. And I think that's what God wants for us. So if I'm saying this as a parent who cannot even give my child everything, I don't know the plan. I haven't ordered their steps. And the Bible says if, if you as a parent know how to give your child good things, how much more does God do that? Like if a child asks for food, bread, you don't give them a stone. I'm saying that for us Christian women to stand up and say, I deserve because I'm a child of God. And just to say, I deserve it. And this is why. And then and just go have fun and get it. Believe it. And so that's where I'm trying to be right now. I don't think I'm all the way there. But just getting this letter and reminding me what I actually stood up and said at the conference that the Lord revealed this to me is that you're my daughter so you deserve it like it's your birthright oh my gosh I don't know why that's so hard I think somehow we're conditioned in our culture I live in the United States maybe many other cultures but you're somehow we're somehow conditioned that we have to earn everything else it's we're not worthy of it in a sense we you need to work hard and you need to learn and you need to not come out here like entitled but that's not how you treat people you don't treat people like you're entitled and for me systems weren't set up for me to succeed and so I've never seen anything else I've seen my parents who are immigrants from Jamaica and India I've seen them work hard every single day I've seen them work hard and I am a black woman an immigrant kid in America I don't this system wasn't set up for me so I always work hard but I am a child of God first. I am a child of God first. So I know that only by God's grace, I deserve. But the fact is, I deserve. The fact is, he already paid it. I heard Tyler Perry said this thing once in this interview. Black people in America, we walk around like we don't deserve. And he said, but our ancestors already paid for it. And when you think about it, it's actually true. They already paid for everything. They built this country. They built the United States. They built places around the world. They built so much of the infrastructure. They invented things. They never got paid. Basically the credit, the credit's there and it's for us. <laughs> when he said that if I finally got it, like I know I've heard that Jesus is a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world, that he already paid the price. He already did it. It's just, being manifested inside of time when he died on the cross but it already happened before the foundations of the world so whereas i can definitely believe and accept that my ancestors 
already paid the price. I would be their pride that Jesus already paid the price and that we are his pride. We're his passion. He wants the best for us. Why is that so hard? Why? Because we don't want to be like the world, you know, focused on money and all of these things. What I'm focused on is the life that I deserve, the life that God has for me. In Ephesians 2.10, I will put up on the screen, but I'm going to paraphrase for now, that we are his workmanship and that he made good works for us already to do. So it's already done. Whatever he has us do. That's the other thing I've learned is what we think is good is sometimes bad and what we think is bad is sometimes good. And so if your job is to be a trash a trash person, you actually feel like you're walking in your purpose. That's amazing. Like whatever you do, if you can feel like you're in your purpose, that's pretty special. I've cleaned toilets and felt like I was walking in my purpose because I was actually working on a play I had written for church years ago and the church let us use the space to rehearse and do everything. I remember one of the kids got sick in the bathroom and I happily went in there, cleaned everything up. I cleaned it so good because I was so grateful to be able to be doing what I've always wanted to do. I will be directing and then on break doing craft services and got grilled chicken on George Foreman grills, you know? That's what I do because I just felt like I was in my purpose. And let me tell you today, I can do just about any job on set and I'm okay. There's a few things that I know that I want, but I've been able to accomplish so many things and I'm so grateful. I've been able to have a family I've been able to find a husband. Not that that's the most important thing, but for me, that was important. Um, I've been able to see my family of origin come back together. I've been able to go back to school and get my master's, which I'll be done in December. I've been able to be a professional actor for two years, two, two years, two decades, excuse me, two decades. I've been making films for the past decade. I've been working in community and helping young people. I've been able to do so many things and there's a few bigger things that I want to do which is I want to be part of a TV show or film that really impacts culture positively um, and that really makes a mark. Something that like really empowers people and is really fun. I really want that to be <laughs> something that does that. I'll be working on that and sharing the journey. I also want to move somewhere. Um, I always wanted to be LA but I'm open to whatever the Lord wants. I want to create something called legacy properties in countries of my family's origin. So Jamaica, India, Ethiopia, Panama, Ireland, and be able to create homes where my descendants can go and spend time for retreats or go explore those places that their ancestors have come from. And it's really important to me to leave that legacy in all the work I do is to take the time to know who you are because knowing who you are is so powerful. And I think that all comes back to knowing that you deserve it because if you know who you are, then you know that you don't have to sit around and be like, well, you know, is it very arrogant for me to think that I deserve this amazing life? No, it's not because you're a child of the creator of the universe and he has already done and he has already placed out the best for us. And I want that. I think the problem is trying to decide and determine exactly what I deserve and kind of reframing it like I deserve the best that God has for me. I deserve what he said in his word that he has ordered my steps. I deserve to walk in the steps he's ordered. I deserve to do the good works that he's already planned for me. You know, I already deserve that. He's already done it. And so I am preaching to myself right now. So if you like this, if you found any value in it, um, please leave a comment down below. Let me know if it helped you in any way. Um, and please subscribe and let's go on this journey together and enjoy life and walk in what God has for us. Walk in our purpose. I was that kid that's like, why can't Jesus just say what he means? Like, why does it have to be so cryptic? 
And the funny thing is he's actually not cryptic. He's actually very straightforward. It's just when you're young, you don't know certain things, but he's actually very, very straightforward. <laughs> But also, I think the whole journey of digging out what's inside of you, what's placed inside of you, means you have to build that relationship with God. And I think that's what he wants. And so in that process, we get he gets to have a relationship with us. We get to have a relationship with him. We get to know him better. We get to know ourselves better. And then meanwhile, we're digging up that special gift. And the whole process of even bringing it out and sharing it with the world gives us fulfillment and joy. What a great like dynamic you know i couldn't have invented that that's genius i will talk to you in the next video all right bye